Welcome back to Kevin Pollock's chat show. I am, as always, chat show. How the hell are you? Mm. Still waiting for an answer. I think you look great. We have a great guest here today. <laughs> and uh, before we get to he or she, uh, Sammy, Jamie, how's it going as we come to you live from the West Side Comedy it's Theater? It's going very well. You know, typically most people who've clicked the link to watch the show already know the gender of our guest. I, I know that, but <laughs> I feel like sometimes people join mid, mid, mid stream. Bang, they're on the audio only. All right. They haven't looked at anything. Okay. I could be Dorothy Kilgallen. <laughs> we don't know yet. We don't know. Uh, they brought that show back, I think. The, um... Mm -hmm. What's my line? Yeah, for a minute. Uh, if, whole, I don't think it's it, but it was for a bit, or maybe it's still on. I don't know. Episodes. Be. Be. All the shows are coming back. Everything's come back right. at least once. Can't wait to say <laughs> I'm available. Jamie, how are you? I think I'm finally situated. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, I sent you a thing. I saw there was already questions on the Twitter. Um, we were here last week. We were. Not a lot has happened. No. Although, if you follow the news, every day something has happened. Yeah, well, the winner of the Super Bowl happened since our last show. Yeah. Yeah, how I'm about that? I'm confused as to when all these are being released, so I don't know what. Never you mind. <laughs> to what That's to none of your talk damn business. about topically. Um, a historical Super Bowl where one team watched the other score 28 points, and then that team watched the other <laughs> score 28 points, and then all the jackasses who said, I knew it, were right <laughs> with the outcome, uh, although not the game they suggested. I have a report. Please. Um, I tested the theory that Disneyland is dead on Super Bowl Sunday. Complete myth. Complete myth. It was crowded as balls, <laughs> and I don't recommend it. Crowded as balls. Let's go to the origin of that term because <laughs> I like it, but it don't make any sense. I don't know. Uh, just a lot of balls. What's happening? Where? Like a ball pit. Ball pit. I was thinking like a ball pit. I saw them in my face. No. Um, it's not crowded. It, it, and then it, you were no, told, no, no. hey, it's going to taper off. It was crowded. It, it was, was going to taper off once the game starts. Not, not so, so much. much. Even a cast member suggested that to you. Yes. Which cast member was it? Was it Goofy? Uh, it was, no, it was the cashier at Trolley Treats. It wasn't Surly? No, that's at, uh, that's at Duff Gardens. <laughs> I know. Um, no, it was the cash register at Trolley Treats where I purchased, I acknowledged the day, and purchased a football-shaped cookie that was quite delicious. That's true. Several of us received that photo instantly. Yes. <laughs> Look, I realize it's the Super Bowl. The I big game. I bought a cookie. Yes. The big game. Yeah, we couldn't say the Super Bowl. So I bought a Still cookie. Still can't. Um, right I've just returned from New York. Nope. Nope. Not the case at all. No, sir. Why would that be in there? Write to us at kpcsfanmail at gmail.com. What was that? KPCS, as in Kevin Pollock chat, ch chat show. Fanmail at chat show? Dot com. S sch schedule? Schedule? Well, schedule. chat show would be a very different show. Because they chat? Or yeah, it's the past chat. tense of shit. I just gave an interview to the Daily Mail. The, uh, the oh, did the you? UK periodical, Daily Periodical. Uh -huh. 25th anniversary of A Few Good Men, they told me. How about that? Yeah. So I had to provide pictures of the Tom Cruise pen. Yep. There it is. Um, and stories. That's fantastic. Yeah. I look forward to reading it. 25. Do you? you I do. subscribe to the Daily Mail. Uh, I read it online. Sure you do. Why not? Why not? It shows up in my feed. Is it any better than the U.S. Postal Mail? <laughs> what? It is way better. And Jamie, what is the, uh, what is your favorite periodical? Or Clinton. Oh, wait. Oh, no. I got it. I went down like a rabbit hole earlier this week of looking up. Remember Weekly World News? <laughs> Weekly I was looking up old. World News. Bat Boy. Yeah, Bat Boy. Clinton meets with alien. Jamie, Always the same alien. Jamie, if there's any way to drop the photo of Clinton shaking hands with the uh, befuddled alien. He's just kind of. <laughs> no, he's like, you know, he's very sincere. He's like, Clinton, listen. Yeah. It's like this. He's like this. That's right. It's very sincere. Upcoming guests, you ask? All right, settle the fuck down. Christopher Guest, speaking of guests. You're not buffering. <sighs> Christopher Guest, Lauren Graham, <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton, J.K. Simmons, Dave Keckner, Jason Alexander, Dave Couillet, Kevin Nealon, Fred Savage, and more. Can't wait for that and more guy. Mm -hmm. He's spectacular. 25 years? That's not correct. 1992? 92? Yes, sir. Oh, A Few Good Men. What I thought you said that? Usual Suspects. Check the tape. He probably said A Few Good he Men. He did say good, I'm very tired. Men, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that far often, but... No, 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 no. 
I get confused. 95 for the suspect, sir. You knew right. that. Right. I did. Uh, do you watch us uh, on the YouTube live? Do you join us on the Earwolf after? Let us know. Please write to us at KPCS fan mail at gmail.com or our very own JMAC will forward me some emails, which I can't wait to read on the show. Uh, did someone hit my car? What is that? No, it's definitely not your car. No, it can't be. My car says just the name Elon Musk. It just says it over and over again until you come over and over again. Um, let's introduce our guest. We've dillied and or dallied sufficiently. All right. Uh, return to this fine table. Same table, completely different everywhere else. In fact, we're coming to you live from the West Side Comedy Theater. Last time we talked to this gentleman, we were in a black box. Please welcome back Mr. Stephen Root. Stephen, yes. if I may call you that. Yes, let, uh, me, let me give you first my, my only impression. Please. Hello, I'm Mr. Ed. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Mr. Ed, Jamie has a visual that she will text whenever me every now I'm and really, then. Whenever I'm really sad, I just watch the clip of Mr. Ed driving a car. Sure, and it fantastic. Makes me, yeah, and There's, it makes it's like, like a van. with this hoof. It's like a van truck thing. It's like yeah, a big well, giant thing. Really and just driving. the roof sticks out when he's signaling mm -hmm. for the left. Wonderful. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> when TV was king. Uh, I worked with Mr. Alan Young. Did you really? I did. Great. We did uh, a short lived series. Um, very clever. Uh, Barry Kemp, who had just come off the Bob Newhart, the first Bob mm -hmm. uh, Newhart show. Yeah. Um, Coming of Age, it was called. Paul Dooley, Glynis John. Paul Dooley. Phyllis Newman, mm -hmm. wonderful cast. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I was able to join the Writers Guild because of it. Because I pitched an idea for a show because my character was fifth lead and I pitched an idea for a show <laughs> for no other reason than to become at least the B story. Sure. And Barry Kemp said, that's a great idea. You want to write it? I said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How many directors have you met with who said, do you ride horseback? And you said, I have a saddle in the trunk. <laughs> that old gag. Um, what is the root ah. of root? The root of root? Yeah. Uh, I think it's Flemish. Sure. From what I hear. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, Do people come from Flemland? There's, there's Scandinavian in my, my background, I believe. Uh, I'm sure there's Ger Germans as well. Sure. Uh, but that's what I remember from my, my grandparents, that it's Flemish. It is the original family name, we oh, think. God, I don't know. My, oh. my dad hated all of his relatives so much that we really didn't know nothing about them. We had a break. In the Pollocks. In fact, one spelled yeah. it A-C-K and the other spelled it A-K. I'm not kidding. We did not talk to them. Oh, yeah. No, it was Crazy. like that. Crazy. Uh-huh. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. As I, kids, we didn't understand I it. heard my dad had a sister. Never saw her. <laughs> <laughs> you heard uh, you had an aunt. I heard. But no. Uh, yeah. To this day. Yeah. It, it was... It was. You kept the family tradition of refusing to speak to her? Yeah. I think it's why also that, that we're, we're very close-knit because we didn't, we didn't go see the aunts and the uncles and the cousins. We have some first cousins that, that, uh, that we would see only because uh, my dad was okay with them. Sure. But, uh, and, they were, and they were cool. And what so, part of the world was this? I was in Florida. Sure. Actually. Because you traveled a little bit. Yeah. Dad's in construction for a union power plant. Consequently, you're moving from state to state every couple of years like an army brat. Yes, sir. Got that yeah. right. That's why I have no childhood friends. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you All right. Didn't make those until you became a gator. Yeah, pulled, yeah exactly right. right. Yeah. Uh, I had one high school friend that I worked construction with in my dad's plant, but that was, that was it. I mean, because I was gone. I was gone somewhere else. What the fuck was that like? I mean, I literally have no. You were always, you were always the new kid, and that was that was a drag. Sounds horrible. Yeah. On paper. Uh, it was. Doesn't read well. Because you'd get up, you know, in some class that you're you're always the new kid in. You're mm -hmm. always stuck in the corner at the end, and you go up and write your name on the board, and your butt wiggles, and so you're dead. You're Writing done. your name on the board, and your butt yeah, wiggles. Yeah, yeah, your butt wiggles. Wow. Yeah. Like, I remember I'm that Donald Duck for being some so so embarrassing. Yeah. And it's, also it's the pH me. as a kid, the <laughs> pH and Stephen yeah. can't fly well for the bullies. Yeah. Well, it was Steve then. Steve. Oh, you you did just go I with did, Steve. Did just went with Steve. I, the Stephen came as an actor. Actually, you had to... after after I did the National Shakespeare Company in New York, and I just felt like that I wasn't a Steve no more. So I went to Stephen. Seriously, you became it became a no, dramatic. No, that was my name, but still, I uh, just Stephen sounded right. After it wasn't that. quite fellas. I want you to call me. Yeah, it, Sting. All the people who still knew me and who who knew me in the Shakespeare Company is Harpo. 
Um, they still call me Harpo and Steve. But you're going to need to keep talking about the Harpo <laughs> business. Why did they know you as Harpo? Harpo because refused to speak. Well, we did. Always had a horn. This, I well, that's the thing. <laughs> I had. Uh, this is a bus and truck. Bus and truck, non-equity company out of New York. Nine months of the year, we toured the country doing colleges. Three shows. We all went, Shakespeare? All Shakespeare. We, went, we would go to Woodstock for four weeks, rehearse three shows, double cast in each show, get on a Trailways bus, you know, your, your little genies and a thing, and you'd go perform all over, or all over the place. One of the shows... Age? I, I was probably 23, 24. The oldest person we had in the company was 30, who we, we thought, you know, if we ever Grandpa. were dead, yeah, if we ever get that old. Um, but it was great. It was the best thing because you could you could perform in a 2,000 seat house or in a junior college cafeteria. No sense. So the happening. show would have to change. Yes. You would have to projection would have to change. Your idea would have to change of what the show was going to be. The one show we were doing was Comedy of Errors set in the 20s. So the Antipholi were you know very you know uh, businessmen and and the the Dromeos were their chauffeurs. And, and, our, and, and uh, as much scenery as we had, I think we had a car that we carried. Sure. You know, it went like this. <laughs> and the only prop that we had, of course, was burp. And one... Oh, I see, the, 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 the horn, horn for the Yeah, the car. Auga 20 horn, uh, 20s horn. And was one week I lost my voice. Just didn't have it. So I was just... Mm-mm-mm. da da mm Forevermore. Harpo Marx, yeah. Uh uh yeah. Good lord. Yeah. Has anyone requested you go back to that and while you're working these days? <laughs> my wife. <laughs> Would like me to shut up. <laughs> my wife. Yes. Um This I found interesting. Every now and then I'll hear something like that which is utterly the opposite of my Northern California suburban upbringing. Um the uh, the moving around every couple of uh, of years it just it didn't make any sense to me. So, what what other than the butt shaking writing your name? <laughs> w when I think I'll feel. Is better there for ever it. a moment where you settle in and feel like, or do you know no, I'm only here? Know. I'm only here for a little while. You know, so you don't even try. After second or third grade, you know you're not staying. Um, so it, it and it didn't seem odd or strange at the time. Um, but by the time you got to high school, yeah, and you were ripped out of that, sure. Then it was you're looking at girls. And then you're, going, you're not going to see her in a couple of weeks. Yeah, and you're not you're not graduating with your class. You're not doing. You don't care about the football team you're going to. Yes. You know, and so right. It was a drag. And then uh, you become a Gator. Uh, yeah, because uh, because I was the last place I went to high school was Vero Beach, Florida. Beautiful retirement home, Vero Beach. Uh, didn't care about being there, but uh, an in-state in school was cheap in 1970, which was Florida. Uh -huh. And somebody as stupid as I could even get in, so I did. I think that's why I ended up at San Jose State University, mm. because the in-state school yeah. was close it was to cheap. nothing. Yeah, it was cheap. Uh, I graduated in nine months. Did you make the whole <laughs> four or five years? I did get my AA. Did you? I did. Dear Lord. Um, my BFA for... For acting, I left with yeah maybe three credits to go, something like that, because I got the National Shakespeare Company. Yeah, you did. And I went, uh, yeah, I could, I could stay. Nope. Bye bye. Just a little dust of cloud. I want that two hundred bucks a week. Um, you leaning towards journalism, like I our was. very own head writer Jamie. Yeah. And then what the fuck happened? Well, because I was this, in in KC. I was in KC for two years for, of high school. Kansas City, and, and I loved photography, so I was kind of the the, the photographer for the paper. And, Where you went from Harpo to Shutterbug? <laughs> well, I I loved it. I lo I, I had the dark room, the whole thing, and I would take pictures of school stuff, and it was, it was great. And I so I thought maybe in college, and then uh, I got to college. <clears throat> started uh, the second year I was in college smoking as much dope as I could. And when you say dope, yes, I, I, by that I mean shit marijuana. Oh, crappy, <laughs> crappy, seedy <laughs> lot marijuana of seeds. that you put on the album Double cover. Over. You had to because there was forty <laughs> seeds would roll off. Oh, the traditions yes, of people our age. <laughs> what I miss so much about it. Yep. Um, <laughs> Just the album. <laughs> just just the the album. rolling it down. Well, it, it's, I did yeah. pride myself at some point on being the guy who could roll the tightest joints. 
Oh, it yeah. became very, very important to me. Yeah, no, I'll at I, least have this. I understand. You were the guy that could use one paper, right? <laughs> oh, Instead of yes. two. Yeah. Yes, of course. And not even the easy widers. No, didn't need the easy uh, widers. Yeah, no, no, no. It got to a point where I could do it in one hand. Uh huh. And just a little asshole. I forget what the question was. Oh, yes. <laughs> no. Uh, because. We were stoned. That's why you yes, forgot what the question yes, was. Yes, but and, and then. Uh, Kids today don't understand the five finger bag. You had to buy a five finger bag of <laughs> uh, pot and yeah. smoke nine joints to get stoned. At least. But it was a social thing. Yeah, you well, sat well, around. Well, you had, you had a. Um, uh, a lid, we had a lid, which was less than an ounce. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. it was very light because it was a lot of sticks and seeds. <laughs> Most of it was, it was sticks and seeds. Feet. Five fingers was yeah. the, I just remember that was the thing, a five finger bag. I think it became a yeah. song. And half of the joints that you would roll would get ruined by that one stick that would go but through, would poke the through the middle. the paper. Yeah. For Isn't sure. this fun? But you had, <laughs> to smoke, you had to smoke nine. Yeah. Nine uh, joints just to get off a little. Yeah. A little. You'd well, need three beers to go with Versus the two hits now. Or hit. Yeah. Uh, that's and then why you I can't do it anymore. Yeah, it's too much, too much for me. But <laughs> as, as I started doing that, even the shitty pot, um, I would go to journalism class and people would be talking like this and I would go, oh my God, I've got to get out. <laughs> so I did. Were they actually talking like that? <laughs> well, they kind of that's did because they were doing the on college radio and they were doing this. Oh. And, and that became their persona. And I thought, I don't fucking want to do that. No. No. Did you attend the Gator Growl while, while attending the university? I did. And in the swamp. In the is, swamp. It the, is it the homecoming weekend, I think, the it Gator Growl? It is homecoming, yeah, yeah. And I know you have done one. Um, 90,000 people. Uh-huh. And, and during the parade, which I guess is before Gator Growl, I was... We were not allowed to go to the parade. I was, I, was, I was working at Burger King while I was going to... Now uh, you're just bragging. Theater yeah. school. And, and, and they asked me, they said, any, any of you guys want to do the, put on the, the uh, Burger King head and, and costume and go out on the float? And I went, actor, I'll do it. I went out and I won best commercial float because I was apparently very good. <laughs> <laughs> if I may, I believe the... <laughs> it's my first... <laughs> head mask won the prize. It is. And it was literally this big. <laughs> Like I we would. see on the commercial. But it was the gestures that got me the, oh, it must the prize. The prancing about. Yes. Yes. This is <laughs> Do it. dumb. Go for it. But no. I just remember that I had a dream about Burger King last night. But it kind of not. It kind of connects with the film he was in. Mm -mm. Um, because uh, in this, in, in my dream, this Burger King was. I thought it was just like it was very tiny, and I, I thought it only had a drive-through, but it wasn't. What you did was you went up and you ordered food like out of an ATM, like in the movie Idiocracy. Uh huh. Oh yeah. 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 I don't. This is a dream I had last night. I Good just remember, whatever he said Burger King. I'm like, I dreamt about Burger King last night. What was it? And then yeah. that's what it was. The Folk, Go ahead. I was just say, folks, you need to know. Jamie has the most vivid and, and remembered dreams. The next day and you could only that order like four. Met. They they had very few items, and you ordered it like through an ATM. Right. And it was, bur and I, yeah, that's, oh, that's it. That's awesome. all I got. That's and my Burger, Burger King. And Burger King, to this that's day, it. has the oddest ad companies ever. I mean, you, Burger, Burger, any Burger King ad is like going on an acid trip, I think. Purposely. Yeah, I Designed guess. Designed to be weird. I guess. Yeah. It yeah, I find, if I may, the mask uh, off-putting. <laughs> it's scary. I think, I think they ended that ad campaign. <laughs> Probably. The King. But they always come up with something just as freaking bizarre. Do. They need just, to bring back Leah Thompson. That's what I say. I, I'd love to know who the CEO that just likes weird ads. I don't know. All right, well, well uh, write to us if you know. Don't get us started on chicken fries. Uh, chicken fries. Why are what we what even... Is that? <laughs> oh, thank you. Is it the bell? Ring the bell that has decided to wrap fried chicken into the shape of a taco? Yeah. Yes. No, go fuck yourself with uh -huh. this. I tried one of those. Uh -oh. I, I, it wasn't my, my cup of tea. Well, I need to know the whole process of oh. the decision making. You know what? I, I, wanted a to taco. The I wanted a taco so bad it was very late at night and I hadn't had the bell in a long mm -hmm. time. I said, I'm going to go. And then they said, well, what about this? And you bite into the taco shell. It's a piece of chicken. And it's like, nope. Yeah, it's like a chicken glove. Mm -hmm. What the hell? Uh, I feel like Taco Bell could triple their profits if they only opened their stores from like 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Well, that's when they're tripping. Right. Sales. I mean, honestly. Yeah. That, they're losing all that money staying open between 8 a.m. and... Go. Speaking of the weed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Gator growl, yes. Yeah, swamp. Why do they call it the swamp? Uh, it's hot. <laughs> sure. <laughs> It's hot and it's humid. It's no, Florida. No more what calls. is wrong with you? No more calls. We have a winter. <laughs> Pencils down. Um, it's humidity. You remember you, you, you mentioned the traveling circus of actors. Early auditioning in New York. This is always interesting to me, if you wouldn't mind you had share, a lady sharing bag. anything. In, in early New York, a lady bag. You had a big 
briefcase lady looking like bag mm. that had your picture and resume in it and your in your date book and all the thing but your dad comes to town sure and there's a big pocketbook sitting in the living room and he, and he goes, wants to that? know what's with what that? the hell's that i said well that's my actor bag whatever and he goes it looks like a it looks like a girl's pocketbook yeah it does go ahead <laughs> <laughs> That was one of the first times Dad said, uh-oh, my son's an actor. Uh-huh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. He was uncomfortable with that. Uh, he thought it was weird looking. Tell us about that first apartment of yours in New York that first Dad came to visit. Dad came to visit 51st between 9th and 10th. Hell's, well, the Roaches Hell's Kitchen, the Hell's Kitchen Railroad. Railroad. So the, the one apartment, you know, had the kitchen, and then it kept going back and back and back. This. And, the, and, the, and the bathroom was the end of it. So the guy who lived in front had to go out the, the door, down the hall, open the other door and go into the bathroom. A shared bathroom. Yeah, shared bathroom. Uh, um, uh, 350, 375 a month. Right, which you put uh, together from? From uh, waiting tables and finally doing disco bar tipping. Well, <laughs> did, uh, sounded like you said disco. disco Bartending. Which, not yeah. 54, which disco? Uh, uh, 54th Street, 54th and Madison. It's called Reflections. It was. Um, and it was a businessman's lunch during the day, which I would do. And then I would get off, and then we would reset the tables and, and push these speakers that are higher than the roof here. Drop the mirror ball. Next to the, drop, drop the mirror ball and put it next to the bar. So mostly I would, uh, and then, then I became bartender, disco bartender. Who, and you change into short shorts and roller no, skates? No, no, no. I had the whole Tom Cruise thing going. We couldn't do any of that stuff. That wasn't the thing. But Back mostly then. the orders that I would get were, were uh, African Americans going, Give me a Remy and Coke! <laughs> Remy and Coke! Because <laughs> you couldn't hear at all. <laughs> and a Remy and Coke in 1979 was <laughs> seven bucks. That was a lot. <laughs> Kevin's gonna need a um, minute. And and when you would get the tip, it would m more than likely. <laughs> that, I've seen that look. I've uh, seen that yeah, look. Yeah, yeah. The have, intensity. Oh my God! And mo more than likely, you'd get a, a very intricately folded dollar bill with coke in it as your as your as tip. Your tip? Mm -hmm. Every now and then. Yeah. A little. Seventy nine, uh, eighty, eighty one. Yes. Yeah. That's what would happen oh, in, yeah, in no, New that York was, City. That, that was some yeah. golden years. Yeah, so I was mostly, at that point, being a starving actor boy, doing uh, off, 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 right below 14th Street. Yeah. Shitty shows where they give you a token, when they had tokens, to, to get you back uptown. I was doing stand-up comedy in restaurants and, and bars where there, there was no stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. And the thing was to slip some cocaine to the comedian as yeah. a, hey, great job, man. Consequently, the second show was a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> Much more quickly. Much shorter. Yeah. We need you to do 20 minutes, Kevin. You did uh -huh. seven. And then you end up being, to get in any kind of uh, film, you, you become a PA, and that's what they would give you. They, they Is that how you... Um, no, no, I mean, I was doing theater. I, yeah. I never expected to do anything but theater, you know, and I did theater for t 10, 12 years in New York. A couple of uh, Broadway doing, plays? No, well, yeah, later, but what I w was expecting to do was regional theater, in and around. Forever, and that would be fine. That would be, that's why I got in it, yeah, was to do theater. So I would end up doing, you know, theater up and down the East Coast, and then I some in New York City, finally off Broadway, finally Broadway, yeah. Uh, and at that time, I got a movie. 1988. Use 80s. Yeah, 88 was. Maybe we shot it in 87. I've got Crocodile Dundee 2. Yeah, that was my second movie. Yes, of course it was. Your my first movie. First was movie was George Romero's Monkey Shines. Well, monkeys lick my bleeding wounds. Yes, that well, was me. The in the film, monkeys monkeys <laughs> lick your. Bleeding wounds. Well, they did. I think they cut that out. But at one point, uh, we, we shot that monkeys licking my Were these trained wound. monkeys that were licking your forehead? Yeah, the monkeys were scary, man. <laughs> they, were, they were scary. Yeah. But it was a George Romero film. It was thrilling to be. You know, it was my first film. Shot where? Secaucus? Yeah, somewhere in Jersey. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Dear Lord. Yeah. And how did that come about? The only 
at that time in New York, you were, if you were doing, if you were actor doing theater, you did industrials. Sure, absolutely. Industrials. I did them. Uh, Chevron. I remember doing one with uh, Siskel, doing a Siskel and Ebert, and I did Ebert just, you know, eating sandwiches through the whole industrial. Sure, I did right. mine as Columbo. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and you did that, or you did uh, commercials. Mm -hmm. You know, so finally one of these casting directors said, you know, come in for this movie. And I said, you may go on this audition, but you may not tell them that you've never done a movie. You may not. Don't mention you've never done a film before. Yes, and never. what did you do when you got in the room? I, I, I got the job, but I, you know, I, I got on the set as such a complete neophyte, not knowing anything. And the first embarrassing question? Um, now, what I remember is him. <laughs> One of the first scenes we shot was, he knocks on the door, I have to open the door, and you know, I'm, I'm the evil doctor. So <laughs> they knock on the door, I open the door, really quick. <laughs> you go, not, not, maybe not, those, not so fast. It might have okay. taken you a little while to get <laughs> yeah, to the door. Get to the door, exactly. I knock on the door, <laughs> no, wait a minute. Not, Give it a not, beat. Yeah. We'll decide in editing how much Three how times long it I takes. did this, and finally he yelled at me and said, wait to open the door, and then then we went, we're fine after that, but. Sammy, George Romero, uh, famous <laughs> for which film? It would be the uh, Dawn of the Dead film. He's, he's a Pittsburgh uh -huh. person. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. and Tom Savini are from Pittsburgh. What was the mall in Pittsburgh? That they Monroeville Mall. Monroeville that's, Mall. That's, that's, uh, that's the sequel that is, um, there was Night in the Living Dead and it was Dawn of the Dead was the mall, is the mall one. And it's Monroeville Mall. Uh -huh. Yeah, and the sheriff just died from that first film, right? Here's hoping. <laughs> no, he was famous for one line or something, but yeah, he's gone now. Let's discuss, if we can, uh, oh. Bradley Whitford. Bradley Now, you Whitford. and I, over the, uh, the winter, no, the summer. No, the it summer. It was August. The summer it was hot. I went back in the winter to the Jersey and did something. But yeah, it was yes. in the August. It was... Uh, <laughs> Sarah Lawrence. Second, third movie. We were in Red State together. Yep. You insisted we were in the same scene. We were. Okay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I remember seeing you in the parking lot that day. Yes. As we were approaching work. I think it was one big long scene where I'm in the I movie 90 seconds, first of all. Uh, so me, me too. <laughs> but, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, it's now called just Three Christs or Christs? I, think I don't know. I think it, it might just, just Christ be Christ now, now. Instead of Three Christs? Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, Avnet film. The John Avnet. John Avnet director. director. Yeah. Fried green tomatoes. Yes. Produced a lot of things. I worked with them many times as a producer. Right. Uh, Miami Rhapsody, a lot of other films. I Had did, you worked with him? I did uh, Justified with him. That's where oh, I knew him Oh, of course. Him from. Yeah. Loved you in Justified. Love, love, Red Speedo? Love Justified. Red, Red Speedo, Speedo and Guns. Oh, sure. <laughs> Red Speedo and Guns. What a fun, wonderful so show. So fun. Great. And uh, he, in the episodes he did were great. He directed them like it was fantastic. So it, it was yeah. really fun. He had a pace. Yeah. Loved him. Um, so you and I worked with Bradley Woodford in that film, but yes. you were saying the last three films you've done. Well, I did um, uh, All the Way, the Brian Cran Cranston's All the Way, uh, which he played Hubert Humphrey, and I played uh, no, Ho no. Hoover. You played Hoover, he played LBJ. N no, uh, Cranston did, but yeah. Bradley. Bradley was the Hoover. Played, played, no, Bradley you played were Hoover. Humphrey. I was Hoover. I'm trying to confuse this you. Is so an there's a lot of H's, right? H's in here. Uh, but yes, Bradley We're was... We're talking about Bradley Whitford. So we were in that. And then I get the call from Jordan Peele um, and saying, I'm doing this weird horror film in Alabama. I'm thinking of you, would you, would you would read the script? And I went, I love it. Let's go down and do it. Yeah. Who's in it? Bradley Whitford. <laughs> the fuck. As the dad and Catherine Keener and uh, uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel. Um, Craig. I can't think of his Better name. Better story he's, if it's he's Daniel the, Craig. The lead in Atlanta. He's oh, great. Oh, Daniel Roebuck. No, not Roebuck. No, you said Leno thing or something else? I misheard huh? you. The, uh, no, I said the, Atlanta. Oh, the show oh, Atlanta. Uh, uh, Daniel uh, Lava. La, 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 uh, Donald Glover? No. No. Well, look, then I'm out. But Daniel, brilliant actor. Google, quick, no, Atlanta, I, I'm a TV show. I can't remember his Daniel. Name. But anyway, yes. Uh, so we did that together. We did that, and then we did that together, and we did yours together. So I did. We did three, three, three in a row. Three in a row. Uh, had you worked with him prior, Bradley? I'd done West Wing, but I was on the in the other camp. 
Uh -huh. I, was, I was in the uh, Alan Alda um, Republican camp. Sure you were. So we, we would walk by each other in the hall and go, that prick. that would be about it Yeah, for that show. Uh, favorite memory of uh, anything Bradley Woodford said? <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. And so yep, when thank you. in New York does the Go West Young Man happen? When you're in New York uh -huh. as a Oh, Go actor. West. Okay. Uh, well, I've done a couple of films. Like you said, I did the Monkey Shines film. Sure. Somebody get that. That'll be for me. Uh, and then the Crocodile Dundee 2. 2. And the then, big sequel. Then it became A lot me, of anticipation. Crocodile Dundee came out of nowhere to be and huge, was a enormous. ginormous... Success. Huge so when hit. you get the news you're in Crocodile Dundee yeah. two, 2, that's got to feel pretty good. Was a success. Not as not know, important. I'm saying going into the film. Yeah. Huge. Great gig. Huge. Great. Thought I was going to have this great career. I did uh, Romero. I did Crocodile Dundee 2. And then I did what? Ghost. And I said, oh, well, this is... I'll never stop working. Fantastic. Yeah. I, I will be in the greatest movie. That was the last good movie I did for 15 years. Seriously, go. Yeah, because uh, then I then I became a uh, uh, sequel boy. I did uh, RoboCop three. <laughs> I'm going to say new, news radio is shortly thereafter. Uh, not quite. No, no I, news I radio did. was mid nineties. Mid nineties, yeah. yeah. But no, but this these are, we're talking about eighty nine, ninety, ninety one. Oh yeah, that stuff. You're saying those are the odd years. Yeah. Well, it was it was it was the years I was trying to get film, but. What brought me here mm. was two years on uh, the national tour of Driving Miss Daisy. Holy shit. With uh, Julie Harris and Brock Peters. Three-person play. Hello. Yeah, you're gonna right. See, you're going to see me. You know, when you you're the son. Me, I'm the son. Yeah. So uh, Dan Aykroyd got a nomination for that he did. role. He did. Um, it was thrilling to be. Yeah. It was two years of, like, the greatest actress in the world, and Brock Peters is one of the greatest. Of actors course. In the world. And where did you travel for that? All over the country. Yeah, yeah, big, big time. So trip. that's back to what you wanted to do in the first place. Exactly, got to do that, and it, at the highest level. Yeah. And then you're I, playing great theaters in every. Great city. Great theaters in yeah. every city. Yeah. The you know the Eisenhower at the Kennedy and the the Wilbur and all huge you know wonderful. Spectacular. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, you thought I don't need this TV crap. Well, I, right before that, I had done. I I'd been on on Broadway with um, All My Sons, with Richard Kiley. So, and that's what had led to Driving Miss Daisy. So I'd done a couple of Broadway shows and that led to Daisy, that led to here. Yeah, I'm surprised at that point things are going so well you were even thinking about who gives a shit about California. So I had a brand new baby. Child. Child. Sure. And doing theater is okay and it, you can do it. If you and travel the country for yeah, two years. Yeah, if you live in Queens and, gonna, and you, you know, yeah. So I said, I'm going to try it. If I'm, I, if I'm going to be in L.A. six weeks, every casting director in town is going to see me. Why not try it? So we, we came out to try it, like everybody else. And early on in your time in L.A., there's an early episode of Night Court, which resulted in Harry Anderson writing you a part to a come back one. on, the, on yeah, the show. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. And he was great. Was that the first time something like that happened, where you did yeah, that Yeah, yeah, where, where they were impressed enough that Please I come would back. like to bring you back. Yeah, yeah. That's a great It was feeling. fantastic. It was great. Uh, and then I got to recur on L.A. Law and Civil Wars. I was a Bochco boy for a while. Right. Um, you know what our friend Bill, uh, Brian Doyle Murray says about reoccurring? I told him I was reoccurring on a show. Oh, I love reoccurring, yeah. They're always happy to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I love Brian. Yeah, of course. Um, but Shout then, out to Brian. Then, then I got a real show. Then I got a real regular on a show, which was... Series regular. Series regular on a show called Hearts of the West which was basically Northern Exposure, but it was Western Exposure. Sure. It was, it was Bo Bridges. I'll say. Lloyd, who was still alive. Uh, Lloyd was a regular on the show? A regular on the show. What the? And he was 90-something then, or almost 90 then. Um, Good Lord. He couldn't really retain stuff, but he, was, but he could stop a horse on a dime. He was an amazing horse guy from doing all this western. In his nineties, they let him ride a horse. They did. Can I vote against that? Uh, uh, he was he was he was natural as pie. He was fantastic. That's on a horse. extraordinary. Yeah. So I did that for two seasons, and then news radio. Right. Yeah. So I had done a lot. I, you know, a lot out here. Yeah, yeah. I was guest star boy a lot, and on one series and. 
I'd done a Stephen King miniseries called uh, Golden Years. Um, Stephen King. Stephen King, yeah. It was a, a like six or eight part miniseries, which was a big deal for me at the time in 1991. Of course. Yeah. Sorry, yes. Not to circle Sammy, back too please. far, but it is understandable that you could not remember Daniel's last name. It is Kaluuya. Kaluuya, yeah. Yeah, Which sorry. Is, no, no, yeah. I looked it up. It's I just saw him at the strange. premiere. I should freaking know. No, it's a very unusual he's, he's brilliant in this movie. Get out. Get out. Go see it. Yeah, I, we do want to see the Jordan Peele film. Oh, my goodness. We so, talked about that very so, thing. So very good and weird. Let's uh, take, speaking of weird and awkward, let's take a moment now for our sponsor and thank them for sponsoring the show. Yes, our sponsor today is Mac Weldon. Today's ad copy for Mac Weldon, read to you by a very old Al Pacino. Okay, with a, a smart design and premium fabrics and a simple shopping experience, Mac Weldon underwear is definitely better than whatever you're currently wearing. In addition to looking and feeling great, ha! Huh, all Mack Weldon products are crafted with natural fibers that have built-in performance capabilities. So they work hard, too. Yeah, they're not slouching those capabilities. Oh, no. They even have, at Mack Weldon, a line of silver underwear and shirts. Whoa. That are naturally anti Microbial. Ooh, I like that. Antimicrobial. Uh, for the less educated, I'm told that means they eliminate odor. Yeah. All that, and they're shipped right to your door. I didn't get that part. What, I, what is this? Look at that. You order online, and they come to your home. If you don't like your first pair, by the way... Keep them anyways. Do what you want. You're going to get refunded. No questions asked. That's what it says here. No questions asked. They don't want to know nothing. Uh, no questions. You keep all that information to yourself. You are going to be happy. Go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off your first purchase using the promo code Kevin. K E V I N Mac Weldon dot com. Who are? And we've done that. Um, <laughs> what all uh, uh, honestly went into the creation? Um, the, the name of this character you play in Oh Brother, Where, Where Art Thou? is just listed <laughs> as radio station. But man. that's not true. His no? name his name is Mr. Gubb. But yeah, but just in the credits. Did, so in the credits, it does say it doesn't say Mr. Gubb. Yes. Yeah. They don't like giving me a name in their movies. Horrible. And that's okay. Radio well, station it's completely band. okay as long as they keep hiring you. <laughs> but how much of what we end up seeing, which is not only scene stealing, it is forever stamped on the brain <laughs> with the bizarro antics of this character you play in. Oh I Brother. seem to do only uh, parts where I have weird eyes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was also, there was a hand with a cane. There yeah. was constant movement with this yeah. guy. He was very excited. Well, they asked me if they, I wanted to, 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 they said, do you want something? I said, yeah, I would like to do the cane as, as, as part, of the, part of the deal because that was, because he's listening. Yeah, he's listening, and and they said, and and we would like you to, you know, kind of sing along with it. And I went, no, no, can't can't sing along, but I, I would like to, mm, you know, not sing. Yeah. But but do something vocally that would be, that I, I, I just didn't hear him singing or humming even uh, just some bizarre. Whose sound. idea that one eye should look off to Jupiter? Um, I I came in with that, because and, I, and that's how I think I got the job. I think I just scared them. Because they were right there. And yeah. And then what? You're gonna do what? I'm gonna do this guy. Oh, okay, good. <clears throat> and, I, <laughs> and I started. And I started. Now, was that <laughs> a face you had made prior? No. No. Nope. Just, just the decision. Just came to you. Yeah. I, I couldn't. I can't hold that. No. No. For. Oh, nor should you. <laughs> for well, I can hold it long enough for the take. Right. You know. But that's it. 
Yeah. There's so many scene stealing moments in that film. The fact that you could stand out at all. Oh, that very film lucky. Well, is well written, like soup to nuts, of this bizarro mm -hmm. cameos and so fun. And everyone's doing John a Turturro. crazy voice. John Turturro. Turturro. Yeah. I mean, everybody. John. John. Goodman. John. John had a had an iPad. Cyclops. Didn't he in that? Yeah, Cyclops. Yeah. 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 Um, I love. John and I had done Roseanne in ninety. Ninety. You must remember Stephen from Roseanne. I I was I was the lawyer. That she she gets a neck brace because she's in a small accident. Gets a neck brace. This was and during I'm, your guest yeah, star. This is my guest run. star years, and and I'm her lawyer who's afraid to go to court. Terrified, can't do it. Dear Lord. <laughs> um, it's time now for our very own quiz worth a thousand points. Okay. Are you ready? Oh. Okay. Please think carefully about your answers. All right. A torrid affair that no one discovers, or watch a Lifetime movie about a torrid affair that no one discovers. With Jason Antoon, I'll watch the movie. <laughs> okay. Um, this is just a prop today because it ran out of ink. Eleven hundred dollars. Eleven hundred dollars for the refill. That, is that real? That's, that's how he got me. That fucking is this the first time you've ever had to refill it? <laughs> no. Thanks to the internet, the refills are a dollar. Um, you ready for question two? Yes, please. Keith. Keith, Sarah Jabaka. Okay. Golden years. Third question. Uh huh. Cauliflower or Carl Weathers? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take riced cauliflower over Carl Weathers. A thousand points. A thousand points Thank for our you. guest today. Pretty good. Please, somebody mark Thank that down. All much. three correct. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> okay, now. Uh. Let's break down the last couple of years of the and the enormous amount of work you somehow uh, were able to complete. Odd. Where yes. do I begin? Mm. Spectral. Spectral. Yes, went to Budapest to shoot that with uh, James Badgedale, who I just did another movie with in South Africa. <laughs> I keep hearing from people who are shooting in South yeah, Africa. Our friend new, Walton Goggins is there right now. That's new, correct. Uh, it's become the new uh, new North Carolina for some reason. It, isn't that bizarre? It's a long way to go and to save get, some money. And you get all the shots ahead of time? I, no. Not I, as many? I took, I, I took, there's two different kinds of malaria thing you can do. You can take one a week, but it's kind of a big dose and you sleep weird. So, or you take the daily malaria, and I took that. I'm going to go with the daily malaria. And, it, and, and it's no problem. The doctor put me on a daily malaria. Yeah. Um, what is spectral? It's woo. Um, it's a. By the way, that is the correct answer. <laughs> I don't know why you're continuing. Uh, it's true. I don't need to because it's about a, a military paramilitary unit fighting ghost soldiers. So you can go from there. Ghost soldiers. That's right. From. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you and Romy did Masters of Sex together? We did! Oh, man. Oh, it was fun. Yeah? It's great, because it was 1969. I'll say. Mutton chops, cl the clothes, unbelievable. Sure. Um, and sex. And, uh, yes, and watching, uh, watching them get naked and have sex. Mm hmm You know, Michael and, yeah. That, that would be your characters were voyeurs? Uh, we, we were sex Scientists. therapists. Therapists. Well, we you were, were you were uh, knockoff sex we therapists, knock as I recall. We were stealing fan their, of the show. basically, fan they were coming to see if we were stealing their uh, ideas, and yes, we were. Uh, Sammy, a fan. Uh, it was, yeah, but it was really fun. I mean, I love those actors. They're in heaven. Yeah. All the way we discussed. All the way. Man in the High Castle. Man so, in the High Castle was a long secret. <laughs> Because you had shot it and had, they had yeah, to hold on to it for a while? They had to hold on to it for months and yeah. months and months. Yeah. And the, and the whole first season was talking about Man in the High Castle. The whole second but season. But that there was, was a man. Yes. And the whole second season, uh, was, we had to shoot before we could say anything. There is a man, and you there were the titular one. character. Out to be me. Yeah. Yes. Was that the first time you were the titular character? I think so. I believe so. I did my very first professional job right out of. School was a very short run of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, and I was Charlie Brown. That's the only other time. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Did you play him as a good man, a very good man? I, I played him very innocently. I think I was very funny. But it was, it was, I was still smoking dope, so I don't remember anything. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah. Life of the Party, speaking of which. Life of the Party was a blast. It was M Melissa McCarthy yeah. and uh, her husband directing. Um, and it was real fun. We shot it in Atlanta for You were the folks. I put a lot of gray in my hair and played her dad. Yeah. It was fantastic. And the wife was played by? Um, um, That's all we're going to do is quiz you and, and make sure you forget your co-star's name. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, a brilliant Australian actress named Jackie Weaver. Correct. Jackie Weaver. Um, Infinity Baby. <laughs> More fun with Nick Offerman. Yeah. Um, huge fan of him and his wife, obviously, sure. uh, Megan. And uh, I had done a film with Bob Byington, a local oh. Austin director, a couple of years before. And uh, he asked me to come in and do it. And, and I said, who's doing it? And he said, I, Nick. And I hate Megan. to interrupt, but our guest's mic has fallen. Oh, no. Holy shit. <laughs> Hang on. How long ago was How that? How long ago? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. All right. Good cat. Go back to Infinity Baby. Infinity Baby. Infinity Baby? Yeah. <laughs> Why, that's a movie I did with um, Nick Offerman mm. and Megan Mullally. I understand you don't care for them. Uh, I think they're the greatest <laughs> thing since sliced bread. Did you see him in The, the Founder? Man, I loved him in The Founder. Oh, I can't. No, I have oh, not seen it. I so can't good. wait. I, there's nothing he's not wonderful in as... Same with her. But Bob Byington, I'd worked for an Austin director a couple of years before. He said, come do this. And it's Martin Starr, um, really bizarre concept of something happens to some of the women in the country and they start having babies that do not age. And you only have to change them once every two weeks and feed them once every two weeks. So there becomes an agency that has to find places for these babies, and there you go. Infinity baby. Holy crap. Because it's always a baby. That's right. Very funny. Uh, sounds hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still it's confused. It's a movie about Sam. It's a movie infinity about baby. Sam. Infinity. Sam yep, is that's a me. bearded infinity baby. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, <laughs> wah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, far too many questions are asked about uh, the, the, uh, the glasses, the stapler. Uh. I did read something interesting about this. Still to this day, you'll show up to start a new film and a box of staplers will be presented we'll to be you. Will be there. For you to sign yes. for people. <laughs> yeah, which is fine. It's pretty I mean, sweet. I, it's great. It's I'm, I'm sweet. so happy people love it. And I, I love Mike Judge. I probably wouldn't have a career that I have without Mike Judge, so I'm always grateful for it. Um, it. But it astonishes me the amount of shaking people come up with staplers to this day. Saying, yeah. Please. Sign. And behind those crazy Coke bottle size thickness of glasses, uh -huh. you were, I read you were wearing contact lenses. Correct. So that you could still somehow see? Uh, yeah, was? that way I could just barely see, but I had no depth perception. So whenever I would have to reach for anything, I would have to... I would have to practice it. I would have to. So if the stapler was here, most likely I would go here or there. Oh man, that cake but I had passing to, must have been but really I had to, you'll, you'll see me. The I cake passing? The cake yeah. passing difficult? Oh, the cake passing, yeah. <coughs> cake pa that was one of my favorite scenes, actually, because there, there was, no, was, there was no dialogue in it. He said, just make up what you want to do. I want you to come in. <laughs> I, I want you to come in between these two people, and then whatever happens, you don't get the cake. I mean, all right. So the thing was, you were promised cake. Was yeah, I was cake. promised cake. Yeah. So I would just, whatever I mumbled was, was, was made up. You two knuckleheads probably remember exactly what he mumbled. <laughs> which was? I just remember, he just, just was mumbling. I, I, like, I was, that was, was probably last cake. time I was, I didn't get any cake, they ran out of cake, and I was promised cake. <laughs> <laughs> just, that's all it is. <laughs> I think my, the most quoted I get from people is, I haven't received the piece. <laughs> <laughs> that, which was a good ad lib, I have to say. I haven't received a piece. With a lisp. <laughs> I haven't received a piece. <laughs> oh, God, that's good. <laughs> Taka baka. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you're about to start work. This is very exciting for, uh, for someone who never stops working. You're about to settle down again. 
yeah. with a television program. Is it 10 episodes to begin with? Ten, yeah, they're all 10 now. Uh -huh, Everything yeah. is 10 now. Which is good. I like it so much. Right. Then you can go do sweet little movies like we got to do with uh, yeah. Cabinet. Yeah. This one starts shooting. You've already done, done the table read? Yeah, we've, well, we shot the pilot. Uh, and Bill Hader directed it along with Alec Berg. Um, great, and they wrote it as well. Uh, fantastic. Former guest of this show, Bill Hader, we love him madly. He is the biggest mensch in the world, isn't he? Yes. He's the best. Just saw him actually at the S and W diner. Best so guy, funniest, smart, quick. You do this at Sony. Sony. That's why we saw him at the S and W diner. That's all he, coming together. Sony. So uh, they're. They're very collaborative in terms of they're, they're giving us a script early. We read them ourselves and not necessarily for Sony yet, just to see how they table sound. Table reads for yourselves. Yeah, so we're doing table reads for ourselves, then we'll do them for Sony later on this month, and then we'll, we'll start doing it. And the name of the show? Don't know? Not allowed it's, to say. Right now it's Barry. I've heard it um, Which is obviously the name of else. your character. It's, her, it's his. Oh, of course. Yes. Yes. Um, are you allowed to say what it's about? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's about a low rent hitman from Ohio. From Ohio, which is that's Bill. what I liked about it. Very yeah, small town, very small town hitman because hit that man, would happen. And I, of course, am the guy who sends him on these low rent hits. Yeah, uh, and we're just trying to increase business. Um, <laughs> so I um, widen the reach. The, I'll tell of the you. Show. I'll tell you. The pilot involves him hitting somebody in Los Angeles, and then you go from there. He comes to Los Angeles. Correct. Uh, that's that's running into a big market. Yes, it is. That's expanding the business into a big, big, big market. Maybe the number one market. Yeah, number one or two. So we have more where where to go. Yeah, more you things do. to go there. Yeah, and you get to shoot in L.A. And you get to shoot in L.A. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do they have a premiere date, a release date, a time of the year that this may be coming to HBO? I don't even know if we mentioned this. Somebody for that HBO. from Sony would know that. I'm I don't. Sammy, you want to get him on the phone? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's just say May. How about let's we just say May? Let's call it May. You remember that we're actors. We're the lowest. They don't. Tell I feel us. like June. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Summer series. I feel like a release in June. Okay. I feel like a drop Whatever around the nineteenth. Whatever you think is good. Right when we're back in uh, KC. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Is that when you're in KC? Is the nineteenth? It's around there usually. Yeah. Yeah. Nineteenth, twentieth. That's cool. Like that. You'll uh, keep, you'll keep me apprised of that. Now. We have to drag Stephen to. Uh, if he waits KC. 10 minutes after this, we can, I can wait guarantee him an invitation. <laughs> As I in did flesh. go to Ruskin High School. We need to talk to we our are, next we guest are about the, the Eagles. Ruskin High School. The Eagles, yes. Yep. Uh, <laughs> the Ruskin High <laughs> Eagles. Yep. You, uh, was this the, one of the schools you were allowed to care about, or you were shortly Yeah, because I was there. No, 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 I was two years there and then ripped out for your, uh, your senior year. It was great. Ripped out for the senior yeah, year. Yeah, it was fantastic. And every time Dad brings this up to the family, <laughs> much like the actor's man purse, it's, there's no conversation. It's just we're going now. We've got we to go. Yeah, which was, uh, I didn't question it at the time. It was fine. I think probably would have been, we had enough good friends there that I probably could have stayed and finished. But it wasn't what we did. So, How do, how do girlfriends along the way happen? What? Don't be silly. Thank you. <laughs> uh, when my uh, one of my last couple of questions is, I'm going to need a little information about you oh. as a Klingon, um, <laughs> because you know there's a chance that people don't necessarily recognize you from the Klingon because there's some prosthetics not. involved. There are. It was three and a half hours. That's what I wanted. Was curious about three the, and a half the, hours, four thirty call. Um, for for back then, which was 1990, maybe uh, it was a longer process back then uh, because they had the nose, and back then they had dentures. They had, I mean, not dentures, but three or four teeth that they would give you that were kind of that you put in. So it was a longer process. Um, I still have my nose. You kept the Klingon nose. I kept nose. the Klingon nose, which is deteriorating because it's been 20. There was ridges years. on the. There's ridges. Right. And I kept the teeth, but my teeth have changed so much since then they don't they don't fit anymore. But I do have those artifacts from that time. That's pretty great. It was very great because I got to. Spock I got, was in that episode. I got that was the first time an original came back to. Uh, so it was huge. It was a two part episode. Two part do, episode. Do you have wriggles? 
information on your phone? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you buzz him and sure. ask what He's the fuck? He's not going to show up. What the fuck? What are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Why not do that live on the show? Um, <laughs> Why not? <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, that was a blast. I was thrilled out of my, my gore. Did you have the gumption and wherewithal to uh, approach Mr. Nimoy and... Uh, have a not Mr. Nimoy. Not N Mr. Nimoy. That would that would be too much. Just talking to um, the regular Picard and yeah. and yeah and Data were, oh my goodness, he was so nice. Who played Data? Brent Spiner. Brent took me all. He was the greatest guy ever. Took a you know guest actor who was wide eyed sci-fi sci -fi guy. Took me to the transporter. Took took a picture of me as a Klingon in the transporter. And, and took me to the bridge so I could see that beautiful oh wood God. thing. He was so cool. So cool. You were also a Twilight Zone fan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to go deep? Shatner in the Twilight Zone? He did three. No, two? he did two. Okay, he did two. And the diner did one's two. my favorite. Diner one is fantastic. To the airplane. Yeah, that scary little bobblehead. There's a moment in that when we see the first version of Captain uh, Kirk. Yeah. Yeah. Honey, are we going to stay here all day with this thing? And he says, I don't, don't know. know. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly and right. Captain Kirk was born in that moment. Great. Well, I, I've, I've had my bucket list Cat, um, Shatner moment. Do we want to listen to the wriggle um, voicemail? Yeah, let's do it. Cold listening on my microphone? Yeah. Oh, I just sent the text, but let's do it. Oh, boy. You have to put on speaker, dingus. Wriggle. <laughs> And uh, I'm trying to figure out uh, where to park and all that stuff. I'm not seeing the theater. Anyway, all right, I'll find it. I'm around, though. I'm trying to just get there. You want to call him? I'll just text him so he's really distracted. I'm the, <laughs> I'm the worst at directions, and even I figured out how to get here. I'm going to make sure I tell him that. <laughs> we have the worst already here, you idiot. Yes. Uh... Uh, favorite episode of the Twilight Zone? Go, give me the, the, the top couple. It doesn't have to be one. It could be a couple that, other than the Ka uh, Sh Shatner ones. Yeah. Because well, there are some. There are some. How many did um, the one where uh, the glasses won? He, Burgess Meredith was Burgess in four Meredith episodes. did what? Four? He did four. He right. was in um, the, um, Time, Enough the at last. Time Enough at Last. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Mr. Dingle the Strong. Mm -hmm. Obsolete man, and he was also in an hour-long episode. There was one season that was all hour-long episodes, right, and he was in that one. It's Devil's Printer, where he played the devil. Okay, well, the one with the glasses is everybody's favorite, and and it is mine too. Um, the other one, to serve I, which man. I just I love to serve man. Uh, I just saw recently on whatever they do the twenty-four hour one at uh, Halloween or something. I don't know. Uh, um, New Year's I mean, Day. New Year's. New Year's Day. Yeah. The. Um, now you knocked it out of my head. We're watching. We're oh, the one where the uh, uh, um, uh, the neighbors come over and try to get into the the bomb shelter. Mm. Yes. Yes. Love that one. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. There's the, it, every year I can't get enough. Yeah. And this last year it seemed like they were airing ones that we there's always. One I was or, over. I think it was the they do it on Fourth of July and also of July. New Year's Eve. Uh, New Year's. Maybe it's and New Year's. I think about. it was Fourth of July. This this particular marathon in which they aired all of them in order. Oh. And because there's a certain episodes that you rarely see. There's a George Takai one that's um, a really? little uh, that's considered racist now so that they rarely show, but they showed it. Yeah. No, I, I, I love seeing the hour ones because I maybe saw them once. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that was what, like, that was like season four, I think. For the record, the George Takai episode is a little racist because during it he does actually say, no ticky, no laundry. <laughs> Seriously? Yep. Nope. Wow. No. Not true. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, mo he mostly talks about uh, cock on, on Howard Stern. So. <laughs> yeah. That is also true. Yeah. Uh, it's time for your Larry King game, sir. Oh, oh, <coughs> I don't oh. know if you remember <coughs> how the game works. The doctor put me on an all-mucus diet, <laughs> and it's going well. Um, this is your camera. When you're ready, you will look into it. As Larry, you will, uh, right before going to the phones, uh, mention something about a peculiar like or dislike. These are Larry's thoughts. He would share these thoughts that no one cared about. Basically. I see. And yeah. you're reenacting that moment, oh. and then go to the phone. So stare down the barrel, share something about Larry's inner thoughts, not your own. And Larry's give me a bad Larry King impression. I don't want a good one. I can't even do good. a bad one. Yeah, oh, yeah sure okay, you can. Good. No, but I'll... Ooh. Do Larry as the character, the radio station guy. <laughs> no, that's okay. I have to think of something uh, 
See, making me think quickly. Uh huh. Take a moment. Give you a knee. Not going to happen. Uh, it, that's hard for me. Did Riggs respond to you? Not yet, but presumably he's driving and looking around. So driving and looking around. Call the fucker. All right, please. I'm trying to buy some time for Steven. You ready, sir? <laughs> I'm not even nope. ready yet. Hang I'm on. Close. I was, I was very, almost very close. close to a thought <clears throat> when you interrupted me. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do a live call now with Rob Riggle. <laughs> if he answers his phone. Oh, it's going to be on. Hey, Rob, it's Sam. You're live on our show. Hi, Rob. Are you, are you parked yet, buddy? No, I'm in a parking garage right now. Uh, because this place all of a sudden has lost its mind. It's a sunny day, so everybody's, everybody's out. It's true. It's a sunny day in Santa Monica. Is he on the yeah. top? Go to the top level. So there's, there's zero parking and crazy traffic. If you try the top level, you might have some luck. I'm not even sure if I'm in the right parking garage. I just, I just found a place so I can park and try and get there as quick as possible. All right, well, take your time. No rush, buddy. There's a live call from Rob Riggle, everybody. <laughs> All right. So nice. Take your time, sexy. Be careful. I don't even know where the theater is. Where's the theater? I'll, I'll text you the address. You're going to venture me in on this thing, man. All right. I will text you, park wherever, get here whatever. Uh, that's all the time I can buy you. I know. I, 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 can't, I got nothing. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not improv trained. I can't. Help! Really? Help! Nowhere in your training. Were you no, forced? No, it, you know, it actually terrifies me. Um, uh, when you have to put and I've, and I've glasses had to, on you for you to be able to improvise about a slice of cake? No. You I, improvise there? Uh, yeah, I guess so. But I guess if you give me Larry King, which I can't do the what impression of. What is the of, oddest thing you can imagine, Larry? That improv does scare me. Really? It doesn't scare me within a, a, a character that I'm comfortable with. Right. Yeah. So but, give us Larry's yeah. first ride on a pterodactyl. I'll, get, <laughs> I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Now just look into the camera and share, as Larry, share his thoughts on his first ride on a pterodactyl. It's high. It's scary. Let's go to a collar. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you have to do, folks. Be specific. That's all we ever ask. My did, uh, sincere thanks to you, Dr. Thank Stephen you, Roots. I so appreciate uh, it. Roots, and complete uh, your uh, a series and tell more about it uh, thereafter. Uh, for now, called Barry. Look for that in the summer of uh, 2017 Yay. on the HBO. That will be fun. Uh, thank you so much for thanks, coming man. back. It's always great appreciate to see you. Appreciate it. Uh, now that you're local, we can break some bread. I would love to. Uh, last comments on the visiting my poker game. How was that for you? It, it was great. I mean, the poker game was great. Fun Here, guys. Here's They're fun guys. They're great. It's Texas Hold'em, which has never been my favorite game, but and, and they play it a thousand miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> they, I loved it. I love the people. Love the game. You had a great. good time. I had a great time. That's all I care about. Um, there you go. There's our show for today. Sit there uncomfortably, Stephen Root, while I wrap things up for the folks at home and all around all right. these here places. Uh, Sonia Cabrera sitting in for our own Samantha Ward on makeup. Thank you, Sonia, for that. Dr. Kenny Chen on the floor and the directing. Sammy and Jamie, as always. There it is. Mike Duman. Can I go out with a theme song for Mr. Ed while you're doing this? Yeah, you can. A uh, horse is a horse, of course, of course, and no one um, can talk to a horse, of course. Luke, uh, pronounce your last name for me. It can't be alien. It can't be alien. Alan? We Alan. Go yakety With an odd spelling, that's all. Take the time and day. J-Mac, thank you once but again Mr. for everything Ed you do and refuse to do. Unless he has something he to say. He did not want to take those muffins. Didn't want to carry. Oh, my God. Of course. Until next time, and as always. Of course. That is, of course, unless the horse is the famous Mr. Ed. Get out of my face.